Hi muckers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. I am in the best mood. First of all, I'm currently filming this at 1.40 a.m. Hey, and I am in the best mood because I am flying home tomorrow to Ireland for the first time in so many months to see my grandparents. I'm gonna be there for literally like 24 hours, but I'll take any time with my grandparents and I'm just so excited. So if I'm like all giddy, it's because I'm like mentally preparing to finally go back and see my grandparents who I haven't seen in so long. Um, but anyway, I'm excited for today's video. So thank you for clicking. Thank you for being here, spending an, even a little portion of your day with me or night or whatever time of the day. <laughs> I appreciate you being here and we're gonna get into it. Okay, so first of all, first and foremost, Gonna say my normal thing, 65% of you who are not, <laughs> are not subscribed, who regularly watch my videos. So all I'm gonna say is, consider it, consider subscribing, please, don't be shy, and let's get into it. Okay, so, yesterday I posted a video and it was talking about the fact that Garrett Watts and Andrew are currently back. And this has actually come to surprise for a lot of people because Garrett was in Shane Dawson's friend group, as we're aware. And Andrew was the filmographer of it and he was also included in a lot of the videos and he was definitely like a main character in it. Um, but there was a lot of criticism whenever Shane was doing these videos with Andrew that people felt that Andrew wasn't getting the credit that he deserves. I made a video on this yesterday and I touched upon that specific thing more in detail if you want to hear about that. Today we're going to be going down a different route with it that I'm really interested in. Um, but yeah, so... Andrew did a post yesterday after Garrett released a trailer announcing that he's coming back to YouTube full time, which a lot of people are very excited for, and he's coming back with the horror, scary, spooky boy type of content that he did with Shane, so people are like so ecstatic for that and so excited for that, and I'm really excited to watch that and support Garrett. I've always really liked him. And Andrew has announced that he is coming back and he is now full time on board Team Garrett. He is very clearly saying that he is the producer, he's like the editor, He so he's listing off the job titles. And now the shady thing, people are interpreting it this way, you don't have to, but a lot of people are interpreting the statement that Andrew said as, I'm finally being acknowledged for the amount of work that I'm doing. So I'm now working with Garrett producing this spooky boy content, and I'm finally getting the credit that I'm deserving of because I'm putting in so much work. And I was happy for him. Again, I've said that. I have worked in the media field. I'm not classing this as like media, even though it is, but like in my college. And to not get credit for hard work is intense. I said it yesterday. Andrew did not get the credit for the amount of work that he did on Shane's career. And also down to the fact that he literally designed the conspiracy palette and he didn't get enough credit for that. So for him to come back and he basically said, I've been gone for a year. I've been gone for longer than that. I am back now, I'm confident, I'm ready to work, and I'm excited to finally be producer, editor, you know, all of these different things, and I was happy for him. But a lot of people really have a little bit of mm, feelings about Andrew because he kind of jumped ship with Shane Dawson kind of like that. Whenever Shane was getting cancelled in summer 2020, it was kind of one week Andrew was filming a video with him making fun of cancel culture and Shane getting cancelled in a way of like, huh, people trying to cancel him. If you remember, you know, the Jeffrey series. And then the next week he was gone. And there was no mention of Andrew from Shane, from Andrew, from Garrett, from Ryland, from Morgan, nobody. And this was a really tight-knit friend group. Now, I said that my feelings on it was that, you know, Andrew was employed by Shane and Shane wasn't working anymore. And so it made sense for Andrew to leave him. Now, to never address anything that happened, a lot of people have a problem with. And also people just really want to know. We love the drama. People want to know what happened. And I find this really interesting thread on Reddit that I'm going to go through. I always like really hearing your opinion on things, and I definitely want to hear your take on this. So this was a thread that I find on r slash Shane Dawson subreddit, and so this post is from Sire Betty, and it says, What about Andrew? Disclaimer, this isn't a hate post towards Andrew, partly because I know how loved he is in this subreddit. I was just thinking about this as the fallout with Trisha just happened, and I was wondering what you thought about other people. So the general opinion on this subreddit is that Garrett and Andrew are two wholesome guys who don't need to speak out again. Shane. I am not here to argue that. I'm more interested in the fact that Andrew seemingly got, got like blanket immunity for all the times that he worked with Shane. 
Obviously, I don't doubt that Andrew didn't know the full extent of Shane's former controversies, but he has been around for a lot of the videos that we do criticize Shane for, such as the Jake Paul series, the Jeffree Star stuff, and as Shane Dawson's co-worker, he has essentially signed off on all of Shane's content as he himself had an active, and this is all true by the way, had an active role in all of it. From throwing the term sociopath, which was the cringiest thing Shane has done, well, actually, it's not the cringiest thing he's done, but definitely up there. And filming Eugenia Cooney's recovery. So, again, Andrew was included in all of that, and that's why a lot of people kind of have a distaste for him in certain ways. I'm also wondering how much Andrew knew about the inner workings of the James Charles scandal, since it was originally meant to be a part of the Pallet documentary. Likewise, Trisha alleges that she heard a voice note of Shane making fun of her, and Andrew was also laughing at it. So, my point is, why does Andrew get a free pass from saying anything about his relationship with Shane, considering the extent to which he's been involved with his content for years now? I don't want to imply that he holds the same level of, you know, cultability, you know, that he's, like, responsible for it, but he does seem to be a crucial piece of the puzzle. Now, I really think that that's a great point, where it's like, we criticize Shane's closest friends, even down to Ryland and Morgan, and now Ryland and Morgan had the same responsibility, in my opinion, and this person clearly, that Andrew did, because Andrew was the one who, you know, edited the series to make it look like they were going to talk about James Charles being cancelled. He was the one that edited that god-awful Eugenia Cooney series. He's the one that, you know, edited the Jake Paul focusing on the sociopath. These are all great points, so I thought that this was a really interesting conversation. So here we go. Someone responds and says, Peter Mon said that when he was with Shane, he called Trisha a sociopath in front of him, and Andrew was there laughing at it. Sometimes I hope that Andrew and Garrett um, would, you know, speak up about it and, you know, properly, like, speak and cut their ties and officially do it rather than doing it behind the scenes. I would call BS if Andrew cut ties with Shane because of his past content, because Andrew was around for the James Charles and the Jeffree Star series, the Jake Paul series, the Eugenia, and he was around when the Cat and P.E.D.O. podcast comments resurfaced a few years ago, and he even filmed with Shane talking about it. If they cut ties because of what was going on behind the scenes, I would completely understand if they were talking about shady stuff to do with setting up James Charles to fail. Andrew and Garrett don't owe us anything, but I think that Andrew should come out and talk about what he does know. I feel like Shane should be fully blamed for his role, but I find it hard to believe that Andrew knew nothing about Bi sister. Someone said, out of everyone involved, Andrew was the one that actually had a paid, you know, employee registered. You know, he was registered as an employee. No one else was. It's highly likely that he's probably the one that possibly signed an NDA. So don't expect him to come forward about anything. He's definitely not in the same space to come forward whenever others haven't signed NDAs. And now that's the point that I'm bringing, which is like, Andrew was an employee. You know, a lot of people see Andrew as a friend of Shane, but... I kind of just see him as someone Shane paid. You know, he was laughing at the jokes, he was being paid. He was filming, he was being paid. He was in the friend grip, he was being paid to be there. That's my take on it, but I would love to know what your one is. So, someone else said, I always saw Andrew as an employee rather than a friend or a uh, collaborator. Andrew has always been the camera guy and felt a bit simp. By the way, people were commenting on my video yesterday and being like, Adam, bring up the fact that Andrew and Gabby Hanna dated. I don't think it holds any like merit to bring up. I don't think it has anything of substance, but I just think it's piss funny that Andrew and Gabby Hanna at one time were romantic lovers. Take a moment. Take a moment. You, you can have your time. You can, you, you can process it. I'll give you five seconds. They were like a couple. Sorry, this <laughs> is like, it's hard to believe. Andrew really isn't a YouTuber, and while I find his, sorry, I'm just still thinking about the Gabby, and while I find his behavior in the Jeffrey makeup series to be very obnoxious, I can totally see why he acted the way he did. He was probably gobsmacked over the type of money and luxury that Jeffrey exudes and got caught up in a big starstruck moment. Personally, though, I find displays of wealth very unappealing and insufferable. I also recall a few times where Andrew pushed back on something Shane was saying in the Shane uh, series with Jake. 
Paul, he would say things, I can't remember exactly what he did, but he would offer his perspective that he disagreed with Shane whenever Shane was rambling once or twice about different things. I also think people aren't focusing on the power dynamic because it's a bit different when it's an employee employer and I can see how that would have been difficult to navigate and again this all goes back to the point where I'm like I've given a lot of people in Shane's circle criticism for not speaking out not saying enough especially when you're involved in the time period of this content being created I just I really do look at Andrea as someone who was hired and sure, he went along with the behavior, he went along with the content, and that is not something that I want to be like, good for him, because it's not in any way. But he was an employee. And the power imbalance between someone who is, you know, just a friend to someone who's a really popular YouTuber, there's one there already. But whenever you're that being brought into a friend group that you're not aware of, other than Garrett, because Andrew and Garrett were friends, but also the fact that Shane is paying him, he could lose his job if he spoke up. I just think that that is a deeper conversation about the power that Shane had here, and I would love, again, for, if you're gonna give your opinion on this, to kind of, like, like what's your take on that? Because mine is, like, how much responsibility did Andrew have to speak up whenever he was just there to be an employee? But then again, morally, he should have spoke up. I'm sorry. As much as I like the guy, he should have spoke up. He would, you know, film videos with Shane where they're making fun of people um, being annoyed or upset about the, the comments that Shane made about children or cats or him talking about mental disorders or the Eugenia Cooney or so many examples, right? The James Char There are so many. All right. So people are saying, a lot of comments are bringing up his status as an employee. I guess what makes it difficult is that once Shane got a whiff of the positive attention that Andrew then brought him, which is a great point, because again, a lot of people, myself included, would watch Shane's videos, the Spooky Boy series, for Drew, Andrew, and Garrett, not Shane. With all peace and love, Shane was not the funny one. With all peace and love, Shane was not the one that I watched those videos for. The friend group were so endearing. And then Shane would make fun of them for being endearing. And that was the thing that pulled me away from the content. But Andrew, Garrett, and Drew, especially Drew, really pulled me into that type of content. And I know a lot of the muckers were saying that exact same thing in yesterday's video. I do think that Andrew was in an impossible, mentally draining situation while working for Shane. And that's not a great thing. And I saw so many people being like, I'm so excited for this new era of Andrew and Garrett working on spooky boy content that I feel comfortable supporting. Because, you know, a lot of people saw the content that Shane was making and a lot of them decided that they do want to, you know, support Shane moving forward. And a lot of people decided they didn't want to support him moving forward. So... Andrew and Garrett continuing the Spooky Boy series. I know that it doesn't have Drew, it would be better if it did, but it kind of is allowing people who don't feel comfortable, and a lot of people don't feel comfortable with Shane Dawson anymore, and that's a-okay, it's very clear why, to watch the content that they once enjoyed again, but with people that they feel that they can support. I also think that's a good point. Alright, so this is the last one I'm going to read, but it says... I presume that he was made to sign several NDAs, so he is probably not able to say much at all. Certainly, Jeffree Star is known for using NDAs, so I don't think that Andrew would have been able to say anything about working with Jeffrey, perhaps. That's also a good point, because a lot of Andrew's work relationship was working on stuff with Jeffrey. But I don't feel that he has any obligation to, even if he could. Andrew was a paid employee who wanted to keep his job, and I doubt he had any real say about what was included in the videos whatsoever. Seeing as Shane is known for being a control freak, to be honest, if it wasn't for Andrew's laugh and looks causing Shane to drag him into the spotlight, he would probably have remained entirely behind the camera and we wouldn't have a clue who he was. I don't think he was necessarily wanting or seeking to have a job in front of the camera. Some might argue that he should have quit the job earlier, but we don't know what his contract looked like. Now, that's also a great point. And it could have been more difficult once he was included as part of Shane's brand. Shane literally had merch that was Andrew merch. That is so weird to think about. That is so weird to think about. Andrew was there to be the filmer, the editor. And he, because of his looks, I'm sorry, because of his looks and his personality, without those things, he would have been behind the camera for good. Because of that, Shane, you know, 
profited off of him, made merchandise about him, named a shade after, like these are things that it all boiled down to Andrew as a person. So Andrew then was pulled in front of the camera and now Andrew's making his own content. So he had merch contracts, which we know about. It seems to have been a pretty toxic work environment for him. The endless work hours, the lack of boundaries with him pretty much living with Shane and Ryland at one point, the mockery of his mental health issues in one video, borderline SA from Shane and Jeffrey in another. This is speculation, but he's spoken pretty openly on his podcast about his severe anxiety and OCD and the fact that he's been going to therapy for much of his life. So I can't imagine that he may have found it difficult to actually quit until he had to, knowing all the drama and the conversation confrontation that would have been involved. He genuinely seems to come across as a good person on the Sweet Boys podcast and that's always what I've said. Like, I just find him endearing and it like hurts to criticize him. There are definitely things to criticize him for, even if we like him, but I do just have a soft spot for him because it's like, he was there to be an employee filming. He did get pulled into it. He got pulled into that world and it's just a conversation of like, how much responsibility does he have? Because people are like, Morgan has a responsibility to speak up. Okay, then so does Andre. Ryland does. Okay, so does Andre. They were all in one friend group. All right. Um, he values the, the podcast uh, with the Sweet Boys that he did with Garrett, different than Shane and Ryland. And someone who is striving to be a better person. So I really hope he does manage to avoid um, anything else that has to do with Shane. But yeah, he probably signed NDAs and he had probably very little control. And also, Shane possibly could have treated him not so great. All right. I think the legal side of this is probably the most accurate and I would love to know your take on why we really never heard them speak up. They've made jabs here and there. Andrew and Garrett went on their podcast, they talked about feeling used. They talked about toxic work environments. And now the fact that Andrew is like, I'm working on projects again, I'm working on the spooky stuff, and you know what, I'm doing this, 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 and it feels good to say that I'm taking ownership for all of this work. And you know what, as someone who at one time was making films and short films and, and was trying so desperately to get the credit I deserved. I'm happy for him. I really, really, really am. And I would love to know your opinion on it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please talk to me down below about it. I'll be responding to you all night. I really can't wait to hear what you have to say about all this, especially what has to do with like the legal side of it. Thank you for watching, Mucker. I love you. I'm so excited to see my grandparents. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Mwah. Love you.